Good evening and welcome to another edition of Black and Azul. Charles Wolin, Alex Morgan, Joel Soria here back in the studio. The Quakes losing two games in a row. Appreciate everybody for tuning into our last broadcast at Avaya after the Philadelphia game. Lots to unpack about the Seattle game. But let's talk about Matias Almeida first. Uh, some rumors and headlines and, and feelings and thoughts from the manager uh, seeming to be a little bit emotional. Um, but we have a clip from his press conference today, and we'd like to break it down here in the studio. Um, and we'll show you that now. Matias, no, no estuviera haciendo mi trabajo si no le pregunto sobre el tema que se está moviendo mucho en México de que si Matías Almeida llega a rayados o no. Eh, ¿Está consciente de eso, de ese tema? Tengo amigos, tengo jugadores que he dirigido y, y tengo mucha gente, obviamente, que cuando salen temas así, el primero en enterarse soy yo. Yo soy un gran agradecido al fútbol mexicano. Es un fútbol al cual quiero, al cual respeto. Y cada vez que se dice mi nombre, me, me, pone, me pone feliz, porque quiere decir que... Hemos dejado un lindo recuerdo, eh, pero no, no tengo más nada que decir. That was Matias Almeida uh, chatting at his weekly press conference. Uh, he says, I have friends, I have players that I have led, and I have a lot of people, obviously, that when issues come up like this, uh, the first one to find out is me. Um, I am very grateful to Mexican football, a football that I love, respect, and every time uh, my name is said, it makes me happy because it means that we have left beautiful memories, but I have nothing more to say. So this clip from the manager is some rumors uh, maybe sp swirling, in fact, actually swirling uh, about uh, potentially Matias Almeida um, and Monterrey and him being a first choice for Reados. Um, and Joel, you actually asked him this question and uh, you were there at the press conference to, to kind of unpack this. Correct. Uh, I had the privilege of asking him that question, and um, if you've read uh, my piece on MLSsoccer.com, uh, another question was also asked about him meeting with uh, San Jose Earthquakes officials. Um, it, he said that he has yet to meet with them and will do so when the season ends, and they'll talk about um, plans and strategies heading into next season, although he didn't say heading into next season. that That is coming from me. but. Um, I can't stress this enough, and um, as I was sharing with you both, uh, with both of you, um, I, I feel like this topic, at least in the U.S., has been um, criminally overlooked. Um, I, I, I can't sit here and talk in front of this camera and say that Matias Almeida is going to sign with Rayados, but what I can say is that there is concrete interest from Monterrey for Matias Almeida First and foremost, just for yourselves, look at the body language that Matias has been that Matias projected today. Um, unlike other instances today, he was a lot calmer. It seemed a bit more timid. He wasn't as open. And secondly, when I asked him the question regarding Monterrey, he gave out a really conservative answer, but he never closed the door on Rayados. He didn't say mm -hmm. that. His mind was in San Jose, as he said it before. He did not say that uh, his intentions aren't to go to Rayados. He didn't, he, in fact, he said, I will, I don't have any further comments. That was his last comment after he said that uh, it made him happy that he was, you know, the talk in the Mexican rumor mill. So, all these context clues, uh, in addition to what I know, um, from from inside sources is is that is exactly that 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 there's actually real truth to the rumor that Matias Almeida could be joining Monterrey, um, you know, as soon as the season ends, I imagine. Yeah, look, this is big news. This is potentially bigger news than anything that could happen this weekend. Uh, and I think when he, you talk about building a long-term project in San Jose, like he does, and when you take the long view then it's expected that you stick it out and honor your contract. And it would be a disaster for this San Jose team uh, if he leaves over the offseason. Uh, look, in his comments, I think he was very gracious. He always gives the utmost respect to you know people that treat him well. And I think that's partly what he was doing when he was talking about Mexican soccer. Uh, but on the other hand, to actively perpetuate those rumors rather than shut them down, 
um, especially when it's such a real possibility, as you're, you're mentioning, Joel. I, I think that's letting San Jose down. He could have said, as he had in the past, I'm committed to San Jose. My mind here, my mind, my mind is here, but he did not. You know, he mentions four years. He always references the four years in San Jose. Uh, today, that didn't come up once. Mm -hmm. um, also, earlier this season, and uh, you were there, Alex, you were there at the press conference. Um, he was linked to Cruz Azul, uh, one, of, one of Mexico's big five, right? The rumor in Mexico was that Matias Almeida had met with uh, Cruz Azul directors while he was in Cancun for preseason. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it was it was a, it was a pure rumor. And when I did ask Matias Almeida, he reaffirmed that he said uh, the only directors that I met with were those from San Jose. Um, this time around, my question wasn't asked direct. I asked him if he was conscious of the interest that Monterrey. Um, reportedly has um, but then again he did not shoot down you know the possibility of him going to Monterrey and you know from what I know um, nothing nothing makes me believe that this that this can't happen you mm -hmm. know there's nothing confirmed and I, I have nothing to confirm here I just want to make it known that there is a possibility a real real genuine possibility that Matias can be lured by Rayados, who boast some of the deepest pockets in America. They have a, a really attractive uh, roster currently. I mean, one of one of my, one of uh, Almeida's favorite players at Chivas, Rodolfo F Pizarro, for instance, is currently uh, playing for Rayados. I mean, there, there's, uh, and, and uh, Almeida has been um, very kind. He's, he's spoken wonders of, of Rayados in the past while he was in Mexico. And one of the rumors um, that is also circulating in Mexico is that before Matias joined Chivas, um, he, was, he was also sought out by Rayados themselves. So there's, there's, this, um, there's this preliminary relationship there, right? And uh, it, it makes it makes complete sense that Rayados would push for him, push for him specifically, you know, a couple of months away from the FIFA World Cup of Clubs, um, you know, at a time when maybe Almeida can still save the season, depending on you know if they were able to 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 get him over there, you know, uh, as soon as possible. But who knows? Who knows about that? But um, you know, the the interest is real. Let's uh, let's add another quick layer. To, to this, uh, you know, after the Seattle game, he, he was asked by our colleague Jamin Moore uh, a, a, about just the season, and he mm -hmm. went off in a long tangent, the six, seven, eight minutes, talking about how, how referees treat certain players differently, and and referencing players like Ibrahimovic and Carlos Vela, um, and for instance, the the foul against Shea Salinas in Atlanta. Um, if that happened to Carlos Vela, would 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 that still be the same? So he, he was still talking about refereeing decisions and, and feeling that his side, um, you know, has had some decisions against them. And he said, what, why can't we have um, some decisions um, and, and go our way? Um, and, you know, he, here in California, and equality is, is the word that he used um, th throughout, throughout that. So adding another layer to this, to this, that you could see just some, some, and you could you could feel some from fr from frustration from the manager, of course. from these refereeing decisions that just haven't gone his way, and, and justice in, in Major League Soccer, um, and so it's just another layer here mm -hmm. that 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 kind of pokes um, pokes around, and and you know you start to think you know okay well you know maybe there is some more tender to this to this fire here it, and look I think. Tom Marshall, uh, an ESPN uh, reporter, was on our show last week. We were very grateful to have him on our show. And I think uh, he said something that uh, really resonated with me. He said that Matias Almeida is the kind of coach that sort of revels in this us-against-the-world mentality, right, right. in this controversy, maybe in a way that somebody like Jose Mourinho does. So I think there's that element in, in sort of building the psych of this team. Uh, but then when you hear him talk about uh, you know, the lack of respect uh, that he's getting in Major League Soccer, you sort of understand that, hey, wait a minute, maybe this is serious. Maybe this could be driving him away from MLS. And that's a terrifying thought for the San Jose Earthquakes. Yeah, and there's another way of looking at, at this whole situation as well. Um, we have to keep in mind that right now, 
uh, Almeida has leverage over both teams, if I'm being honest with you. Mm -hmm. He has leverage over the San Jose Earthquakes and he has leverage over Rayados. Rayados wants, wants him. Rayados has the money. Uh, you know, they're, they're, gonna, they're willing to go, I'm sure, above and beyond uh, to make sure that they land Almeida. That's if Almeida truly does want to go. Yeah. It all comes down to what Almeida wants. If Almeida wants to get on an airplane and he wants to live in Argentina for the rest of his life, tomorrow he can do so. You know, there's no one stopping him. He's not chained to his contract, is what I'm trying to say. Um, on the other hand, he has leverage over the San Jose Earthquakes. In which way, you may ask? In this way. Now, more than ever, he has leverage and influence over who gets brought in and, and, and who doesn't, right? Mm -hmm. He can use this as an excuse to request for players that probably weren't going to be given to him. Because he can, he can pose this as, a, if you can't give me this, I have it over here. Yeah. You know, it, it's it, it's these are these are the high the high level uh, managerial mm -hmm. uh, tactics, you know, behind the scenes that, you know, teams like the San Jose Earthquakes were never used to. You yeah. know, th this is this is big league stuff. And I can't stress this enough. This is this is um, this is a situation mm -hmm. that happens on a regular basis. But in big markets yeah. of this world, not 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 in MLS in particular. That's a negotiating tactic that I think players at you know high levels in Europe uh, use a lot to to uh, you know get negotiating advantages. Uh, I think it's a little different when a manager does it. To me, it's a little more unsavory when a manager does Correct. it. Yeah. But uh, but it's the same concept nonetheless. Let's talk about. Uh, he, he said today as well on a playoff on if a playoff berth determined a successful season for the Quakes. No, I see success in achieving what we had promised, which was to make this team competitive and perform the same way at home and on the road, aside from the results. In reality, the team took a big step forward as individuals, as a collective, and as a club. From our perspective, there was a fantastic atmosphere in our last match. Just reading that and seeing that, obviously, I'm sure he wants to get to the playoffs, and I know that the players do too. And I threw up a little thing on my I threw up a thing on my Twitter, that. yeah, about about Shea. You know, one game and we're in, and we'll we'll, we'll get to that. Um, but this is back on Almeida. On a if a playoff berth determined a successful season for the Quakes, no, period. I see success in achieving what we promised to make this team competitive and perform the same way in the home and, and, and on the road. Very interesting answer to that. I mean, I get it. I it's, asked him this, by the way. Right, and, and in, a, <laughs> in a sense, it's his football philosophy mm. that he's giving an answer to. And he's he's preaching his football philosophy here. But at the end of the day, you're, you you were in a playoff place yeah. for such a long time, and now we, you, you know you fall out of it. And now this is, is this an excuse, or is this like a, a parting, like hey, we did what we could. This is competitive, because it certainly seems that this could go either way mm -hmm. uh, with this comment. I, I think that's an excuse. I think that's you know shying away from responsibility. To be competitive in Major League Soccer means you're making the playoffs. That is what a competitive team is in Major League Soccer, a team that makes the playoffs. It's not that difficult. That is like the, the lowest expectations possible, just to make the playoffs. And I think if he doesn't do that, uh, it, it's not a successful season, especially then if he you know leaves the club, right? If you're thinking in a long-term project, you can say, well, this year was a good first step, but with all these rumors that he's gonna leave the club, uh, you know, that would be, I think, the worst case uh, of all worlds. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I personally think that he measures it differently, right? He, me he measures it completely differently. Um, for him, uh, you know, making big strides in, in San Jose was not necessarily making playoffs. And I think they made that pretty clear f early on, right? They said um, that they essentially what they said was that they just wanted to make improvements. Mm -hmm. and, and you're right, you know, in, in this league, Making playoffs is um, is not really asking for much. It's the bottom you, line. It's you know more than fifty percent. If I'm if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but more than fifty percent of the teams make playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I just I don't know. I I, I think that Matias is just being very cautious, um, obviously about what he's right. what he's transmitting across. And I I think if you ask me personally. I think they're going to make playoffs. 
I really do. I think they're going to go out and they're going to get a win. Um, but for me, it's how are they going to respond if they do get to that situation? How is How are playoffs going to go for them? We'll get to that uh, in, in, in just a second. Happy to take your questions and comments um, and, and, and feedback um, here uh, a, a little bit about um, about what we're doing um, and uh, Matias Almeida, uh, etc. Um, but the Quakes lose a uh, second game um, in a row at home, a little uncharacteristic going the way the form was going. Um, they lost to Philadelphia. We did a post-game show after that. And um, then they lose to Seattle deep in stoppage time. Um, Jordan Morris scoring um, in the game. Um, but a, a little bit deflating because, you, you, you know, at home you had this kind of fortress. You had this, uh, you know, you had this, uh, you know, nice way of playing and, and 13 games unbeaten in, in all competitions, mm -hmm. including the U.S. Open Cup um, and friendlies. Um, but to, to lose at home um, two games in a row in the same week, really, really disappointing. They had two games at home. They knew what they needed to do. They needed to get points from those games. To drop both of those games uh, was a disaster, and it, you know, it could be the games that end up uh, losing this season for them. Uh, look, since the start of August, they've played 11 games, and they've won two. They just haven't shown up when they've needed, show up, and I, uh, when they've needed to show up, and I think uh, these two home games were just the prime examples of it. They had the game in their hands. They, they, they were up against Philadelphia. They were pushing the tempo against Seattle this last weekend. Uh, and then they let it slip. Both games, uh, second half, they had a collapse uh, against Seattle. Uh, they, you know, Tommy Thompson had a red card. And, and even though uh, maybe momentarily that gave them a burst of energy and momentum, it, it caught up with them in the end. Uh, and, you know, they allow a, a late goal, uh, and even though it doesn't, you know, necessarily change the picture that much heading into the, to Portland, they still need a win, and they're in. Uh, you know, just in terms of this team's mentality, I think it says a lot. Yeah, zero points out of the last six. Um, they had the chance to pick up six at home. Probably would be uh, solely in a, in a playoff position. Um, five match losing streak, and in the last ten, the Quakes have two wins and eight losses, just to give you some semblance um, uh, of their form. And then the, the 13 uh, match unbeaten run um, at home in all competitions um, is, is over a little uncharacteristic, um, again, of, of what the Quakes had been capable of um, earlier in the season. And, 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 and I, I just got a, you know, I, we, we got a question earlier um, on Twitter in, in the week about fatigue and squad rotation and, you know, how that all comes into play with the red cards and the refereeing mm -hmm. decisions. I think it's a mix of all of that. And these these, these games right. that seem to be these titanic battles that, that you know, we, we chatted about last week. And it, it's, it's squad rotation, it's substitutions, it's a little bit of fatigue, and certainly these red cards and these refereeing decisions have been completely deflating. Yeah. I think some of the games you can clearly uh, pinpoint uh, the blame on game management. I think there was a couple games where he was substituting Judson out when they probably should have been holding on to a draw. Uh, Atlanta was one of them, I think. Uh, and I think those were clearly game management errors. Uh, I think uh, against Seattle, uh, you know, it, it, it's, I think they're having trouble pinpointing the collapse, right? Uh, it's just the second half, they're not able to maintain the momentum. That's something we've been talking about all season. You know, you say with the, the fitness, their, their style of play is so hard to push the tempo for 90 minutes. Uh, and, and then also, I think, the, as, as you mentioned with the referees, that's certainly a factor. Uh, I think it's gotten to their heads a little bit. And I think, you know, Tommy Thompson's red card against Seattle was really bullheaded. Uh, it, it was just stupid, in, in my opinion. Uh, it's pretty clear he knew exactly what he was doing, you know, stomping on the, the defender behind him. Uh, and as, as much as the Quakes like to complain about the referees and are often justified in doing so, you know, this is one of the moments where they deserve what they got, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, three red cards in their last three games is not just an accident. Uh, it seems like oftentimes you're just getting ca too caught up in, in the emotions. Certainly, and, and Seattle's form in, in the last 10, um, three losses, two draws, Four wins, um, so you know, in in their uh, you know in their spate of uh, spate of things, you know, they they obviously needed 
needed that win pretty badly themselves. Not as much as the Quakes. Right, not, not, <laughs> as bad, not as bad as the Quakes. Um, you know, just, just looking at the standings here, and, and let's let's go it. It's it's let's go for it here. A win and you're in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so Salt Lake in the fifth position at 50 points. Portland Timbers in the sixth place, 46 points. FC Dallas just in front of the Quakes on 45 points and the Quakes on 44 points and just behind them still eligible and has been on a tear the Colorado technically still eligible technically Less still than 1%. still eligible the Colorado Rapids um, and we come down to decision day the Quakes mm -hmm. have to go um, to Portland um, Obviously, a win in there and in a tie would make it just so complicated. They would have to rely on other factors. Dallas losing. Dallas losing. Yeah. Yeah. In 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 order to make it happen, seem like the players though they have a good spirit. Yeah. Um. You know, Shea Salinas. Uh. You know, giving some post game comments that that were you know pretty um you know excitable and you know he was um he was jacked up. I can actually read um what he wrote. He said after four games, if you asked us. If we could play the last game and win it uh, to be in the playoffs, every one of us would have said yes. We went on a string of results that was great. We were not expecting to be in this situation, but here we are. Now we just have to get our heads around one game. We can battle for one game. We can play all out for one game and we uh, one game and get the win. Um, so Shea Salinas, um, obviously giving his comments um, uh, about this, we can. There's some other players' comments we can go through, yeah. but uh, when and they're in. Yeah, look, we've been talking about playoff odds and playoff probabilities and all the different situations for weeks now. Uh, this is binary now. If you win, you're in. If you lose, you're out. If you draw, well, maybe there's a chance, but they definitely don't want to leave it uh, to chance at this point. But look, they haven't put themselves in a great situation. Joel just said on air, you know, he thinks that they were going to win. Uh, I'm a little bit more hesitant. The Quakes have lost their last five matches now. They haven't uh, set themselves up well. Uh, you know, look, they're going to play a Portman team that has also been in poor form. Uh, but I, I, I think the Quakes will have, you know, a, a great challenge ahead of them this weekend. Let's uh, let's pull up a couple clips here of uh, good old Joel Soria in our earlier episodes. We've got a couple here for you. Um, this is Joel right after uh, the Quakes lost to LAFC at home by a scoreline of five goals to nil. Um, this is what he had to say. I believe that the Earthquakes will still fight for that number six spot. If they do things right in the summer, they have two spots open. If they're aggressive, I think two players can make a change here. Two, two DPs, it has to be designated players. They have to at least bring one, but if they bring two, I think they would be in, in a solid spot to compete for that six spot. It's not asking for much. Making playoffs in this league is, is not a huge accomplishment, you know, where more than half the teams are making playoffs on a regular basis and there's so much parity, as you said. You know, we're not, no one's asking for the Earthquakes to win the MLS Cup or to qualify for CCL. You know, making playoffs like they did in, in 2017 it is not a huge, huge ask. So there is uh, Joel uh, talking about the Quakes challenging for the sixth spot with no wins, nothing, not doing anything. And um, so there he is with the sixth spot. Um, but the week later... Joel also goes back on in our seventh uh, mm -hmm. seventh episode, and then this is what he had to say. You wrote you you wrote the San Jose Earthquakes off. I think they are going to compete for, at least for that seventh seventh seed. If they want to compete, the summer signings are going to have to be spot on. So the question is, will Joel's prediction come true? Obviously, he he thought that they would compete for the sixth and seventh spot he's correct um, they still have a chance to make the the sixth um, spot seventh I think a little trickier they it would have to be a little weird but um, sixth spot seventh spot who knows um, I'm not a prediction person um, but look the quakes have suffered so much um, in the last uh, number of games mm -hmm. uh, they have to they have to get something 
they have to get something. And based on you know what Shea Salinas had to say, uh, based on what Magnus Eriksson has, has said, um, you know ho he says hopefully we will next weekend. If we win, we're in. That's good to know. Um, Danny Hewson saying I don't think that we need to change too much. The effort and belief is there, um, and uh, so uh, you know he says it's a big chance. It's a final mm -hmm. that's going to be very exciting. I, I, I think they've got to be able to get. Uh, a result here, um, and and they're going to come through. I mean, I know a lot of people talk about the mm -hmm. Quakes haven't won in Portland, um, you yeah. know, in, in Major League Soccer. That isn't actually 100% correct because they won a play-in game in the U.S. Open Cup in 2011. Um, I actually worked for the team during that time, and then we would get a home game at home, uh, a home game at home, right? <laughs> Yikes. Um, we would get a home game, and um, and we played Chicago, mm -hmm. and then we lost on penalties 2-2. Um, so they have beaten Portland in Portland. I don't know about the Major League Soccer-specific uh, record history there. Um, I know the form looks bad, but um, I'm going to go Quakes win because I'm optimistic. And you know what? I want to continue our show, and so do you. You guys want to tune in every week to us, so why not? And, and look, I think... <laughs> Uh, last week, right after they lost to Seattle, they didn't know whether they mm. were still in the playoffs. You know, they didn't know the results. That's what Chase Salinas said. They weren't aware immediately. So there was a moment where they thought they legitimately could have been out of this playoff race. So, you know, if that doesn't spur them into action, right? Yeah. If that's not a, a, a kick in the pants, I don't know what is what will be for this team, uh, right? And look, the players are saying unequivocally, uh, as, as you read some of their quotes, they don't need to change anything. They just need to keep playing the way they're playing, and the results will come. You know, look, they've lost their last five now. This is the last match of the season. The line between genius and insanity is really thin, so I guess, you know, we'll see on what side of that line they'll fall uh, against Portland. Sunday, 1 o'clock, all matches uh, with Major League Soccer are on at 1 o'clock. Um, it is called Decision Day. It is a new thing that they started about four or five years ago. Um, unfortunately, no club is really getting relegated. Um, I'm not here to talk about pro-rel, but, um, you know, it's it's kind of the, the decision day to, to get into the playoffs or not get into the playoffs, and, you know, they want to make it um, uh, something uh, kind of grand. Um Alicio Sandoval, we're going to take your question first. Mm -hmm. um, coming into the season, if you were told going into the season that we are a win away from the playoffs, um, would have considered it a successful season is the question. Yeah, absolutely, considering you know the 2018 season that the San Jose Earthquakes had, had. And that's actually something that Matias Almeida and I think Shea Salinas too stressed after their uh, loss to Seattle. They said, look, Matias said, if I were to have given the players a contract at the start of the season that said, we're in this position, right where we are right now, a win and you're in, they all would have signed it. Um, so I think in the broad scheme, uh, they're at a, a good spot right now, right? They still can do it. But if you you know, look at it in the context of having lost five matches, then it becomes a little more harrowing. Uh, and if they don't make the playoffs, it's hard to really say, well, how much progress have they really made? Uh, so yes and no. We are Black and Azul. Um, we take your questions here on air. This is your show. Feel free to ask us some questions. I'd like to see a couple more questions in the queue here, but um, let's go back to Matias Almeida. Javier Leon really don't want Almeida to leave. Couple heart bro bro broke, uh, broken emojis and um, a, a somebody crying. Um, Satish Muragesan, yes, we all hope Almeida stays at least for one more year. Uh, you know, just going back to your comments, I think it would be devastating mm -hmm. um, if Matias Almeida were to leave. Yeah. In the sense that he has done so much for these players and really eked out everything that he could do yeah. with them thus far. And Maybe a couple of decisions gone their way. They could be a little higher up in the table, a little bit more confident, maybe a, a, a better potential playoff position. But he's got them to be competitive, got them to, to think about themselves, got them to perform and be in every game. I don't really know the last time, except for the first three or four games, that I felt like the Quakes were outclassed, outbossed, um, you know, in 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 lots of um, manners, and so um, 
you know, so that's the tactical approach from Matias Almeida and what he gives to the players. Um, the character and the football romanticism and the, and the, the global kind of football uh, being of Matias Almeida is, is a special one. And I think yeah. that um, you don't come across coaches like that often, especially in Major League Soccer. Um, and it, it's a treat to have him um, with the Quakes. Um, so if they were to, uh, you know, part ways with Matias Almeida, it would be completely devastating, not to the pl not just to the players, but to the fan base, um, and, and for people like us that cover the team that you know like to get a um, you know like to hear what the manager uh, says. He's open, he's always honest, he's transparent, and he really he really shares his heart with mm -hmm. you about about that. And I think that that's something that's unique. You don't usually see a lot of coaches, again, even do that, that they break this fourth wall mm -hmm. and they chat about other issues going on um, in the world and in different leagues. And, you know, if this thing happened, this thing, you know, could have occurred. Or I look back on my playing time with XYZ or the World Cup meant this to me. Or um, it, it's, it's, um, it's special. Um, so for me, I agree with you, Satish, and I agree with you, Javier. Um, it would be completely devastating, and I agree mm. with you, Alex, it would be, and it would be very, very tough and rough. Yeah. And who's to say, you know, this isn't obviously, we're not saying that he's going, but this is potential um, and, and hypothetical, right, um, if some of this stuff from Reados potentially uh, could be true. Yeah, look, uh, in less than a year, he's really made this his team and his club. You know, this team is built around his personality. He is the engine. Uh, and to lose that would really be starting over at square one again. Uh, look, it's it's the players that are following him, and you even see the San Jose Ultras are following him. He, he's, you know, embodying the spirit uh, that they're putting out. You know, in the past, there's been a lot of tension and conflict between the Ultras uh, and the Earthquakes as a club. Uh, but this year, they've really been able to rally around uh, Almeida's message uh, because he sort of embodies their passion uh, and, and also, as you mentioned, their distaste for a lot of the MLS bureaucracy uh, that they call corrupt. Uh, so in so many ways, he has become uh, the heart of this Earthquakes organization. Uh, and to lose him after only a year would be a shame. Timothy McLaughlin um, writes... Um when Matias Almeida leaves, be it now or down the road, uh, do you feel uh, the ambition of the club has reached a point uh, where they will seek to replace him with a similar um, level signing? Uh, in some aspects, yes, I do. Um, I think that uh, even going international um, with, I mean, Mikel Starry didn't have a lot of success, but even an international manager that has pedigree in other leagues that's not necessarily um, an, an MLS guy or a college soccer guy through and through, um, I think is the way to go. Um, and, and you've seen a lot of managers be successful. Tata Martino, um, for instance, with, with Atlanta, mm -hmm. is somebody that I admire greatly and I thought that had some really nice success. Um, uh, and, and who's to say, um, you know, you can't go for an international um, manager outside of the United States. Um, I don't think there are a lot of top American coaches right now that you would want to go for or get. And I think that that would also potentially stymie, um, you know, what's going on with, with the earthquakes. Because um, we had a kind of a line of coaches in, in a row and then Starre and then Almeida. Again, I'm not saying Starre was, was good um, <laughs> in any sense of His the, the way we... was not good. <laughs> yeah, um, um, but... Uh, I think you got to go back to that, um, and I agree with you, um, Timothy. What do you make of that? Uh, well, look, the one thing I would add is that I assume if Matias Almeida leaves from Monterey over the offseason, uh, they will have to uh, pay out the remainder of his contract in San Jose, uh, which would then, I assume, give the Quakes uh, quite a lot of money to work with to hire the next coach. So uh, I, I definitely think if Almeida left, there would be the expectation that they fill that gap. Um, Alessio Sandoval, if, if Matias leaves, the quality of player that is available to our team drops instantly. Worst case scenario. Um, this is an interesting one. Um, you know, I think some of the summer signings, Andy Rios, Carlos Fierro, still waiting for them to kind of kick on. Um, I think that your point, Alessio, is, is well taken because, um, yes, of course, any player would want to play for Matias Almeida. Heck, I'd be out there with my boots and playing right wing if I could, um, but I can't. Um, with that, with that, with because he inspires, right? He inspires. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that you will see a drop up of player. I think the Quakes 
um, as a legacy team still have a name um, to themselves. They've got a lot to prove. They've got a chip on their shoulder, and they're going to have to turn over some of these players at some point anyway. And so, you know, what what are you going to bring in? Like, just a bunch of yeah. co- like ec- just. Like I, I don't I wouldn't understand that they would have to bring mm-hmm. in someone because the fan base again is 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 alive um, and well in San Jose regardless the, this this fan base doesn't sleep on on this team w- whatsoever that's the one thing about San Jose Earthquakes fans that are different than other fan bases extremely smart high soccer IQ they love their football okay so they would be clamoring if if the Quakes brought in you know just. Look, so yeah. Anyway, if Matias does leave, then the pressure is on General Manager Jesse Fiorinelli uh, to you know find a replacement uh, that can fill Matias's shoes. Right? Uh, Fiorinelli uh, sort of pulled a, a rabbit out of the hat when he when he brought Matias Almeida to this club uh, after Starre's uh, you know awful first year in charge. Uh, the team was in dire need of a turnaround, and it surprised a lot of people that they were he was Fiorinelli was able to bring. Uh, Matias to the Quakes, and it was a coup. Uh, and you know, if he leaves, though, uh, you know, he's going to have to, you know, pull pull out another rabbit, uh, and it uh, certainly puts more pressure on him uh, once again. Dennis uh, Valdevita, if Almeida stays, how much of a squad turnover will occur, especially if we will miss the playoffs? Um, hmm, good question here. Um, I think you will see some squad turnover for sure, um, and I think you have to deal with some players that are on contracts. And mm-hmm. you know, the Chris Wendelowski question is is a huge one. Um, to to be honest, um, I don't think there'll be a ton of it. Uh, again, if he if he stays, um, but then again, who knows? Um, he, he's a he's a guy that does like to turn over his squads. He, he has done so at River yeah. Plate and at Banfield in in Argentina. Um, if you guys followed um, his career there um, as well, um, if he goes, I think there would be immense immense squad turnover. Yeah, if he leaves, I can't imagine that players like Christian Espinosa Absolutely. would have a reason to stay in San Jose. Uh, you know, already it's uh, up in the air whether he uh, can you know find a team in Europe. Uh, after his loan is done. Uh, but if Matias Almeida leaves, I can't imagine that he'll stay. Uh, and, and certainly, I think, uh, look, the, the Quakes roster didn't have that much of a makeover last season. Matias Almeida has been able to do a lot with, uh, you know, a, a group of players that wasn't performing that well. I think he's definitely uh, been able to, you know, get more out of them than the some of their parts on paper, right? Uh, but if if he departs, I have to imagine that there will be a reshuffling uh, in the squad. Um, Marcelo Barriga, I asked this question a while back, and at this point, I think we have more evidence to answer this. Should the Quakes replace Danny Hoosen? Replace <laughs> Danny Hoosen in the starting lineup. In the in the starting lineup. In the in the squad. Who knows? Why don't we just take it in in the squad? Sure. In the squad. Yeah. Uh, Danny Husen doesn't have a lot of confidence right now. He talked after the match how this season has been tough for him. He's had some family issues. He's had some injury issues uh, and just confidence issues. And he's had uh, the start these last two games, and he hasn't been able to, uh, you know, get on that score sheet and and you know show what he can do. Uh, but I can't imagine that the Quakes will let go of him, uh, considering Chris Wondolowski's age. Uh, You know, it's still up in the air whether Chris Wondolowski will continue to play with the San Jose Earthquakes beyond this season. I certainly think he can. This has been one of his most productive years in Major League Soccer. Um, But, you know, if he retires, uh, and given his age, I have to imagine that they're going to keep all their strikers on the roster. Yeah, I totally agree with you. If if Chris Wondolowski decides to retire, you have to keep Danny Hooson. Um, You can't just lose both and then, Mm -hmm. you know, start from scratch. When it comes to your strikers, you need... A striker, um, if if both of them leave, um, and you need a striker, you know when Wando eventually leaves. Um, Danny Hoosen, actually, you know, in, in, in chatting about this, and you just mentioned this, he says it's been a tough season of injuries, family problems, losing your spot. It's not easy. It's something I have to deal with personally. I love to be a part of this team. Obviously, I want to get back to my top form. Hopefully, I get another chance um, next week. So, to answer your question, Marcelo, I think that Danny knows that his form hasn't been up to par for him. Um, but 
clearly the intent is there. He's passionate about the team, um, and I think he probably wishes he could do better. Obviously, the, the family problems off of the field, I, you know, no one really knows about that, and I can't comment on the family problems. But uh, when you have those in the back of your mind, um, that can greatly affect what's going on. Mm -hmm. It really can. It's hard to control. Um, it's very hard. It's very, very hard. Yeah. And look, I think he definitely deserves another chance. It's easy to forget how good he was in 2018. He scored, uh, what is it here? He scored uh, 12 goals for the Quakes uh, last season. Uh, he was one of their top scorers. And, you know, he's 28. He's still in the prime years of his career. So I think if he can regain his confidence uh, and fix all these different issues, uh, if they can be resolved, that he's definitely still a, a strong component of this team that has a lot to offer. So I don't think there's a need to replace him. I'm going to get to uh, some final thoughts here um, for Sunday. Again, the Quakes, if they win, they will be in the playoffs, either at the 6th or the 7th um, position. They won't be able to get 5th. Um, setting up potentially a, a game against Minnesota United, Seattle Sounders, um, or the LA Galaxy. Uh, potentially Real Salt Lake in there, um, but they're at the 5th position right now. Um, and unsure you know, what um, what to make of, of them. But the Quakes would leapfrog into sixth. If they beat Portland, um, they go to 47 points. Um, FC Dallas at 45 points. But Alex, um, when you look on Sunday, Judson restored back into the team. Mm -hmm. Christian Espinosa, Wando. I think Matias Almeida's first choice 11 will... It, it'll be a full strength squad, will, more or less, except yeah. for Tommy Thompson, who uh, will be suspended for his red card. Um, but I guess Tommy Thompson could then more or less directly be replaced by Nick Lima at right back, who, who you know, that's another storyline, him finally getting his chance at right back uh, that he's been asking for. Uh, and then Marcus Lopez or Palmeri at left back. That doesn't greatly disbalance the team, unbalance the team. And do you have a prediction or any thoughts while you watch on Sunday or any pointers you want to share what you're going to see in the, in the well, beginning look, opening for you? Joel is the one for the bold predictions, <laughs> uh, and I love to hold him accountable for that. Uh, I'm generally more hesitant uh, to offer predictions, um, and you know I don't think the forecast is great for the Quakes. If you yeah. look at 538, they have them at 31% odds. Uh, it's going to be a tough match. Uh, I don't know if they have it in them, uh, but this San Jose Earthquakes team has always managed to surprise me. I've witnessed uh, you know, two decision day games that have mattered in my time covering the Earthquakes as a reporter. Uh, in my first season, uh, 2015, uh, they lost to FC Dallas on the last day, and that was what prevented them from making the playoffs. Uh, and then, of course, obviously, 2017, out of Aya Stadium, they beat Minnesota United uh, in an iconic match. That's one of my favorite moments at Avaya Stadium. Uh, you know, so each of these uh, decision day matches uh, really offer, you know, something special and it's, uh, I, I don't think you can predict it ahead of time. It's, it's the 90 minutes on the field um, and anything can happen. No Judson, no party, but with Judson, always a party. So look for that. Um, Judson back in the team, he really makes this team tick uh, without him and him being withdrawn. I think the Quakes could have had a couple more points, uh, especially in Atlanta if they sat back a little bit more. Um, and um, against Philadelphia, obviously they had to take him off there. Um, but his yellow card accumulation really did hurt um, against Seattle. He kind of adds that, that tempo, um, that balance. I think this team will be um, ready to go. On Sunday, they've got a they little chip on, chip on their shoulder, um, five-game losing streak, uh, two wins in the last uh, ten games. Those other um, results were all losses, so two wins, eight losses in the last ten. Um, so now is the time for the Quakes to to step up and, and make it happen. Um, buckle up your seatbelt because um, it's going to be um, a pretty wild Sunday, 1 p.m. Um, that's our show for today. Um, excuse me, for tonight. Um, we will be back on the air next um, Wednesday. Uh, either, when the dust has settled. Yeah, when the dust has settled, either previewing a playoff game for you um, or, you know, shutting this thing down um, or, you know, continuing on. Um, where would you like to see Black and Azul go, um, you know, with, with our show? Um, please leave us some comments or feedback. Um, any feedback is good feedback. Um, we'd love to... Um, 
to hear from you. Uh, Joel Soria, um, who was here earlier, um, Alex Morgan, uh, Charles Wolin with you, um, Jamin Moore um, out of town this weekend as well. Um, our um, associate producer is Aaron Scholl. Our executive director and producer um, is Jason Scholl. Thank you so much for tuning into our broadcast. By tuning into our broadcast this evening, you help build the game of soccer in our community. Good night. Take care.